So today we're going to work on the Lincoln. Um, I don't know if y'all remember from a few videos back that I pretty much toasted the brakes on the Lincoln like really bad. Um, from some help with a few friends on Facebook and the Suicide Slab groups. Uh, thank you, Constantine. I was able to get some information on doing a poor man's uh, rear disc brake conversion. So I uh, figured it would, I mean, it may not really be needed to have disc brakes, but I figured it would be the easier solution to, you know, less moving parts, just as functional, and, uh, you know, newer current parts to make it easy to maintain going forward, right? So um, I'm headed to the auto parts store right now to buy the last set of parts I need to, to do the conversion and then we're going to start working on that here in a little bit and then I'm going to have to get a hold of a friend or something uh, I think that's going to come by and uh, lay a few welds for me if not I may wind up going to a friend's house tomorrow with the car um, not very far so I'm not too concerned about it I'm going to run to the auto parts store real quick it's right around the corner and uh, see you when we get back to the car I have some parts here. I'll share part numbers in the description for any of you guys who are wanting to do this swap. Um, these, these were the brackets. There it goes. And then, obviously, these are uh, gonna be uh, left and right specific part numbers, but I'll show you one. So, we got that going on. Um, my goal is just to knock off all the rear drum brake shit, get the uh, discs mounted so I can put the brackets on the calipers and then mount the calipers to the car to see about where the weld line needs to go. Um, get that sorted, mark it up, and uh, hopefully have a friend or something come over uh, and just weld a few lines for me real quick. Worst case, I'll just drive somewhere real close. There's an exhaust shop down the way. Um, having the rear brake soft's not gonna do anything because the way the master cylinder's set up. I have front brakes. Most of your stopping power's front brakes anyways. So as long as I'm going like stupid slow, it shouldn't be an issue. Let's get going. Those who kept up with the uh, Kennedy Cruise video. It's just a quick swipe. That's what the brakes were doing. All right, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Where's me mallet? Looks like it should not go. I mean, that's not too bad. I'm just going to start getting rid of some of these springs. show you that in a second guys but that was a that was a good chunk Well, 
the last failure happened anyways. That got too far out from overheating and the seal busted and brake fluid went everywhere and that's where the smoke came from. I'm gonna disconnect the brake line on the back and uh, take this out. So, oh, the cup fell out. <laughs> but, anyways, that's uh, what caused my brake to smoke. So I can probably cut these off, or, or um, take apart the axle and worry about resealing it so I'm gonna take a short break to see what I probably prefer to do um, I may I don't know that's a difficult decision if I want to cut them off and uh, and reuse them I may be able to get away with cutting this off only but um I ideally like to kind of keep this as a dust cover of some sort and just reroute the brake line if I need to, but uh, I'll, be, I'll be right back. Okay, well, I wouldn't call myself too thrilled, but um, so these brakes, I don't know if I mentioned it before, off of a 2000 uh, Grand Cherokee front rotors, not the brakes, but the front rotors. Um, they fit, yeah, but half have to do some grinding. Also, uh, I got kind of angry here. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's starting to get... Sun's starting to move so the lighting is getting bad of course. But the better plan would be to pull the axle shaft out right, but um, that wasn't working for me. So I got mad, just cut it off. Well, maybe I can at least get one side almost done, but it ain't gonna happen. Okay, so I'm more or less done with this side. I just got to get someone to weld uh, the bracket on. I'm going to go work on the other side now, and I'll also show a little bit more detail when I have to grind this uh, this other uh, rotor down. So here we go. 
Okay, passenger side. Here we go. I already got the wheel off. Move some of my tools around. So this is a, it's, it's more or less the same thing on the other side, right? But we'll, we'll speed it up a little bit more for you. So, <laughs> parts are falling out. Ooh, I don't know if you guys can see it, look at that. All these parts falling out. <laughs> oh man. Uh, safe to say no one wants these brake parts, right? <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but it's kind of funny. off and then uh, pull it through and bend the hard line and get it out when it's in here. So I'm doing this so I more or less have dust covers.
Okay, change the battery real quick. So, camera angle shifted. You know why? So, instead of grinding down the other caliper and um, putting the other one on here to save time, just to make sure everything will fit, um, I went ahead and just pulled the caliper off over there and put it over here. So, um, or rotor, I don't know what's the caliper. So that stuff's more or less set. Um, I'm gonna grind out the other rotor now. So I'll kind of show you what I did. Hopefully the last uh, bit I have or whatever will keep up. So hold those thoughts. I'll be right back. I'm gonna clean up a little bit off the street so I can kind of get ready to, to just wrap up. And then after that, I'm gonna have to grind down the brackets to fit the axle because they're they come in too much. So I'm gonna have to widen out a little bit so there's a good section to weld so it fits on good. So be right back. All right. So this is the other caliper. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to leave to go buy some new uh, new pieces because. Uh, that one's kind of toast, but there's a uh, center bore right here. You have to get out a little bit. There's a small lip. I think all I did was take that out of the other one. That worked. Um, calipers on there, mounts really well, sits flush on the wheel studs, really centered. Um, now we get that taken care of. I don't need the Dremel anymore, I don't think. Or probably just gonna need to have the grinder now. Um, so this bracket that's holding the caliper on, um, it sits pretty well. On the axle um, there's a picture here um, you can see on the back side I have the e-brake tightened to hold the cat hold it on the caliper in place pretty well and uh, so I can have an idea of where it needs to mount because the, the you know the brakes engaged so it, it sits with that tightened in, it's sitting as far over as it can. So, um, I need to grind this bracket down now. I've gone ahead and more or less made a rough template out of cardboard um, to kind of get close to what I need. Cardboard sits on there real flush. I'm just going to uh, set this up my bracket, draw with some Sharpie, and just grind down slowly and then just keep 
testing on the uh, the axle tube itself, how well that's how well and how flush it's gonna sit, so I can have a good welding surface to get on. So let's get started on that, and I'll show you guys how it mounts up um, with video instead of just a picture after I've gotten it grind down. Okay, so been grinding away a little bit. Um, Got it as close to my cardboard template as I could because it's rubbing uh, all the dirt and grime and everything. It's got all that. I'm just kind of setting it on there and doing like this. You can see right here, it's not rubbing and on these edges it is. Now it's pretty damn close. Um, so the weld should fixate on it really good, but I'm gonna just get that as close as possible so I'm going to take some more off these sides and, and get it on going. So back to grinding a little bit. After I get this one, I'll kind of show you the differences between two brackets, uh, the one with the weld and the one without, so you can kind of see about how much I did take off. All right, both brackets done. Well, one bracket done, sorry. So I'm just going to kind of line them up the best I can. That's about it right there. And it may be kind of hard to see on the camera. Um, I'll go ahead and mark this with Sharpie so I know how much I need to take off for the second one and then I'll show you after I've marked it with Sharpie about where or about how much it was taken off so it's easier to see for you. I don't know if that makes it any easier but all that green is what I'm gonna have to take off. So it's, like I said it's not a whole lot it's just that first time it takes a little bit because you want to get it on there as well as you can right so take that second bracket down and then uh, I'll just go set the calipers on it engage the e-brake uh, to get it adjusted as much as possible it's gonna grind this one down to match the other one mount one of the brackets on the caliper go test fit it and see where we're at so okay so I have one bracket ground down on a caliper. I'm gonna test fit it on the rotor to see where it sits. Here do we go. Seems like this side sits in a different spot than the other side did. So I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the other one and test fit it again because I did something funny. Not that the brackets are gonna be bad or anything, just something is different than the passenger side from what I recall now. So. Okay, so this one sits on a different part of the axle than the other one does, which means I'm gonna have to take off more off this bracket a, a bit. Um, man, I don't know if you can see the... Oh, hey, look, lighting. <laughs> um, I want that to come in a bit more. Um, it's not quite, it's sitting out just a little bit more than I would like. And then the surface on the axle isn't quite uh, perfect weld. So let's, let's start this side and we'll do one side at a time, I guess, because they're different. Okay, I just did that real quick. It seemed like it fit. Um, I didn't have this pad in because... I was just trying to toss it on there easily. 